Greetings, friends. Welcome to the New Moon Groups Check-In. This is a monthly opportunity for us to come together, gathering around the etheric group altar to recognize and acknowledge the note of each group as we're preparing to enter the year 2025. This is opportunity to hear and to recognize the note of each group in the wholeness of the world group as a living organism. This is our way to check in before the important year 2025. Through this program, we seek to emphasize the importance of intergroup connections expressed through practical service. Such connections strengthen the new group of world service as a living organism, vitalizing circulation of living etheric substance between groups and networks of the groups. We recognize that this process contributes to enhancing the world's group capacity to stand as one planetary server, ready to receive the energy from Shambhala in a direct reception via the hierarchy. Today, our guest is the representatives of the 12th group. We will hear about their history and about their processes. And as every month we meet new group, each group has a distinct way of working. And uh, today we will learn about what is the 12th and how they came to be. And I invite now the representative of the 12th to take over and share what they have to offer to the group. Greetings and blessings to everyone. My name is Mindy. We're here today to tell you a little bit about our 12s group. We want to begin by expressing our appreciation and gratitude to everybody for the initiative and for allowing us to participate. And then as a brief explanation, when we received the invitation, not everybody in the 12s was able to respond at that time. So we started the 12s Global Network as a link between the 12s and the inner group. We're going to begin with the meditation and Jim will introduce it. Hi, thank you, Mindy. I'm Jim. We've reached the point where we will have a short meditation. But before Shandi starts, I would like to give a short explanation about this particular simplified burning ground meditation. It's not a personal attunement, although that may be one of its side effects. It is also not a blissful guided meditation. What it is, however, is a practical group meditation, which is a service or a task that benefits all humanity. It uses visualization and focuses upon becoming the root of least resistance for the downflow of positive energies from the spiritual hierarchy. An energy imbued with the fire that does not burn, but transmutes dark to light. In order to include you today, we cannot do a proper twelves meditation. But we ask that you visualize the downpouring of the energies and being bathed in love and light as it passes on to complete its task on earth. You need to do this with dispassion 
and indifference and leave the transmutation and manipulation of the energies to the spiritual hierarchy. Later on in this presentation I will be talking about the lengthier and more potent Burning Ground Twelves meditation. This we do carry out in a group formation. A cohesive group of twelve are formed from four assigned triangles. We join together on the mental plane creating a geometric 12-pointed star and a much more potent meditative force. As Master Moira stated in Agni Yoga, a group of 12 systematically united truly can master even cosmic events. And now I'll pass you over to Shandi with the Burning Ground Meditation. We invite now everyone to turn off your videos that we would be off our cameras while we meditate. Thank you, James. And welcome everybody to the Burning Ground. Connect to your earthly self. To your heart and to your soul. Now to your spiritual self. Then experience yourself in silence and with all those aspects. Experience yourself as part of the planetary life. Experience yourself as part of the solar life. Experience yourself as part of the great cosmic being. Experience yourself as being divine. Now connect to your divine image and design. Above your personality lies infinite realms of light. Seek that greater light. Become free as the light holds you within its essence. It is the great redeemer. Bring yourself into the ultimate silence. The creator's love is within us all. It is the love that heals. It is the love that connects us all. We invoke the avatar of synthesis through the great triangle of Buddha, Prince of Peace and the Christ. Let us focus our group intention to pour light into the furthest corners and the darkest recesses of the earth. And in so doing, we will create a conduit for the powerful inflow of hierarchical energies from their center where the will of God is known and out into the world. Let us link humanity with God and see our group onward moving together in the stream of love divine. Our hearts are a living fire and at their center we will sow the seeds of freedom and the beingness of life more abundant, which lies in the willful sacrificial core of our souls. In the centre of the will of God we stand. Naught shall deflect our will from his. We implement that will by love. We turn towards the field of service. We, the triangles divine, work out that will within the square and serve our fellow men. We see the triangle network 
ablaze with the energies of light, love and life, burning the dross of Maya and awakening the love in all human hearts. Let hate be transmuted into love. Let the darkness be transformed into light and let compassion rule over all. As a group, we will manifest a conscious bridge of the redemptive energy of love and bring forth the energy of unity, invoking within our hearts the will to love on the physical plane. This will to love is not a sentiment, but the experience and expression of an intelligent, coherent, and unified brotherhood. We pledge ourselves to the path of love. We demand of our souls that we, the spirits in form, shall act as a channel for compassion and an instrument for love until we know ourselves to be love itself. We are that love. With pure intent we serve. We sound the note of our ashram as it seeks to externalise upon the physical plane where it has been stabilised and sent out into the world so all may hear the note of love. We place an unbroken circle of protection about us. We seek the protection of our ashram and in the name of the world teacher we invoke the blessing and protection of the overlighting Deva and the Lords of Love. Oh. Oh. Through our creative imagination, we see ourselves standing within a circle. We are points of light within an immense ring of protective golden light. We step forward and connect with each member of our group, heart centre to heart centre. We come into alignment and form a living, fiery circuit of energy which radiates love, light and power. We stand in unity, surrounding the emptiness of the vacuum at the centre of the circle of light. A point of fire flashes forth from the void. Its light grows brighter and the energies encased within it steadily build, taking on the coherent form of a dynamic pulsating vortex, swirling with the beingness of life and all its unimaginable potential. The vortex is now a channel of radiant, active, energetic and vibrational force that forms a gateway and entry point extraplanetary energies to flow through and into and onto the earth. The points of light within the circle have now become magnetized with great brilliance and potency and are ready to anchor and harness the energies transmitted through the vortex. We offer ourselves in dedicated service to the light of the world teacher.
The Disciples Invocation May the flame of the One find the crucible of your being. May the Mighty One issue forth from on high. May love eternal and love inclusive rule over all. Let the flame spin upon the way. Let the light stand revealed. Let the seeker become the rose. May the tide of illusion be turned. May the great work be completed. May the white ones issue their ultimatum. Let the ultimatum be heard by those who have ears to hear. Let them have insight and knowledge that they may understand. Let them choose a right and with free will, and in so choosing, let peace come to earth. Oh. 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 Let us become the fire that will burn the, this unbroken pathway of light from Shambhala through our group soul and out into the world. Let the light of life burn brightly, igniting the light of love in all human hearts. We now open a doorway to the great living lighted bridge of consciousness which is the planetary Antikarana, upon which the world teacher shall re-emerge. Let us burn a great corridor of fire and open the way for the light of the world teacher to blaze forth into the world. Let all barriers be burnt. Let limitations disappear. Let harmony thrive. Let the fire descend. Let us embody the power of truth and the fire of the will to good. Let us serve as channels for the evolutionary force which will create the new world order and unfold the harmony of the divine plan. Let us anchor and radiate the light of life and the light of love. Let us remember unity is and life is one. The World Teacher's Mantra Great Lord of Light, hear our prayer. We before thee come to offer service. We before thee come to offer supplication. We before thee offer all that we are. We invoke thee and thy hosts of light. We beseech thee to hear our call. We offer thee our lines of intent. From out the world of mankind doth come the call. Come aid us in our hour of need. Come lead us to thy holy fire. Come heal our broken world. Lord of compassion, pour upon us thy healing balm that we may once more be whole. Great Lord, we touch the hem of thy garment, that we may be at one with thy divine purpose. Let us serve thee this day and for evermore. Lord, let us become a channel for thy love. Let us smite the darkness and let in thy glory. Great Lord of light, hear our prayer. Where once we were lost, now we are found. Great Lord, we invoke thee. Oh. Oh. Oh.
earth becomes the point of focus. The Logos smiles as all the cells receive the sound. Life blends with love and light when seen upon the planet, which reveals the immortality of us all. Your soul knows this truth. Your heart feels this truth. Now you are ready for the triangle of fire to burn a pathway into earthly realms. I seek the way I yearn to know. Visions I see and fleeting deep impressions. Behind the portal on the other side lies that which I call home. For the circle hath been well nigh trod and the end approaches the beginning. I seek the way, all ways my feet have trod. The way of fire calls me with fierce appeal. Naught in me seeks the way of peace, naught in me yearns for earth. Let the fire rage, the flames devour, let all the dross be burnt, and let me enter through that gate and tread the way of fire. Oh. 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 We have entered into the fire and shone our love into the darkness, using its unifying force to bind together all that has been separated. Let humanity awaken. The energies which have been flowing ceaselessly through the vortex are now beginning to diminish and to gently dissipate, though their lasting imprint remains in time and space. We now withdraw our energies from the circle of light. When this is done, we take a step back. We now completely disengage from the work. The Great Invocation Let the Lords of Liberation issue forth. Let them bring succour to the sons of men. Let the rider from the secret place come forth and coming save. Come forth, O Mighty One. Let the souls of men awaken to the light and may they stand with massed intent. Let the fiat of the Lord go forth the end of woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O mighty one. Let light and love and power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. The will to save is here, the love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, O mighty one, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall. The rule of evil now must end. We extend with deep gratitude our thanks to all beings who have aided us in our task and allowed the anchoring on the earth of the dynamic energies that flow through Shambhala, the hierarchy and into the new group of world servers for onwards transmission to humanity. We have formed through our dedication and strength of purpose one unit of service continuously pouring out light into the world. Let us sound our group note on the inner planes 
and attract the souls who are still sleeping. Let us awaken them to help us to complete this momentous work. Thank you everyone for adding your wonderful energy to this service meditation. I will now pass you over to Vita who will explain the early years of the Twelves. Sorry. Thank you both very much, James and Shandy. It is a delight and honor to be regarding with all of you to be here. And it feels more like a family reunion. Actually, it is a family reunion, as we are all from the lineage, let's say, of the DK and K Jude Humi, and that Ashramic link makes us and bonds us for a long time. So how did it all start? How did 12 start? An old friend and co-worker was already transcribing messages from inner sources when on New Year's Eve of 1981 to 1982, there was a new energetic message which transmitted the following, quote, learn well the art of transmutation from dross astral matter into cosmic positive force for good. Cast this dross into the conflagration of the fiery fire of purification. Transmutation of atomic matter must proceed with all due speed and urgency. This work is the heart of your mission." Unquote. The Burning Ground Meditation, which Shandi led in a shortened version, is therefore an integral part of our world. Messages on triangles were given and messages that took many by surprise. Quote, you are indeed being asked to form an outer lodge. An etheric link of light and power will be made. And between you and the lodge now on etheric levels. Many such lodges are coming to manifest on the physical plane over the coming years. We are all joined within that greater lodge, the great white brotherhood. It must be stated, however, that you, along with thousands of others, will be preparing the way for the one who is coming, unquote. At this point, it might be useful to say a bit more about Veda, the one we call the initiate. The order of the star was an early attempt of externalization through the chosen vehicle, Krishnamurti. Indeed, Veda had an influence upon many writings of that time. Veda is at the forefront of the externalization work and works very closely with the Christ. The organization of the Lodge up on etheric levels has been active from that time and since that time, and again, six externalization up in the physical plane. The first six months of 1982 were clearly preparatory and they were teaching months. It was only seven months later that the concept of 12 was first uh, mentioned and brought to our attention. Quote, certain information has been given out and then groups of nine conscious workers finding a response within the heart center of the one. We now intend to place before you the concept and practicality of groups of 12s sounding a note and bringing forth a response in the head center, establishing a link, if we can say this, with Shambhala. Also, this can be extended into three groups of 12 and so on, unquote. I asked uh, Alexander if you can uh, show a YouTube. Um. It's, it's if it's not possible, me, it's okay. 
it's uh, it will take me uh, 30 seconds to prepare oh. it uh, okay we can we can let me know when you're done okay so it was also in july 1982 that the disciples invocation was given more on this invocation later by our torben it is worth mentioning that it was made clear to us from the very start that 12 were to be an experiment. Again, a quote. Again, the experiment goes forth. No true 12 have yet been tested, unquote. Now, obviously, these were very exciting times because the group who started, who was there at the beginning, we felt like adventurers and pioneers, spiritual adventurers and pioneers, because for a long time, something like this had not been done. So it was really, really, we gave our all to it. And the times where we were very much bonded because of this new aspect of the work. It was, but it was only, okay, we have now, and um, a little video which shows the work what James have been talking about and what the initiate also had been talking about about the twelve work with energetically. Twelves must be likened to a temple of light with an outer and inner court, a sanctum and a corridor of light encircling. To enter requires dedication, bravery and discipline, for the building of light requires exact foundations if it is to be of use to us. From our center light can then be manifested and a conduit achieved which will allow the temple structure to become resilient and receptive to the energies which we will send and manifest. Okay, thank you, Alexander. It was in July 1986 that the first 12th gathering was held at French House in London. From then, yearly gatherings were organized in Glastonbury with additional events in London, in Belgium, in Yugoslavia, in New York, and in Scotland. During this time, one of the co-founding co-workers and main group organizer died. He was very young, he died of leukemia. Um, it was quite a difficult time for all of us, especially for the other co-founder and the scribe of our group. Um, so another co-worker stepped in and took much of the work, but it was not long after that, that he too became ill and his work now with both of them are now beyond the veil. This has brought quite a reorganization of the whole group. It was a very difficult time. And as mentioned previously by other presenting groups, when transmuting collective and group draws, members themselves undergo an accelerated process of purification. The burning ground mentioned in the Alice Bailey books is real and can be painful. The 12th group went through a rough time. At the end, personality issues prevailed and the decision was taken to disband the 12th group. However, it was during this difficult period in the 90s that the most important text was received called the Temple of Light. It sets out in six pages how to prepare for the work at hand, the need for protection, what happens when hierarchical sources direct and transmit energies through a group vehicle, the anchoring phase, the disengagement from the power and realignment to allow reintegration. There is much information that is of use to groups working in the spiritual field in this paper and in this text. Also, if they don't work in a specific group formation like we do. Links have been posted on the chat site 
to discourses, the text of which I have talked, the Temple of Light, and the disciples' information. May I thank you all for being here and for your light, love, and service to hierarchy and to humanity. May the great work be completed. May I pass on the microphone to Mindy, who will now tell us about today's work and today's 12th. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vita. I'm going to give you a brief description on what the 12th work actually is, and then we'll talk about today's work. We're a wildwood group. Worldwide group who meditate in geometric formation for planetary healing and transformation. Our intent is to contribute energetically by offering ourselves as a vehicle through which universal divine love may flow. Our energies interact by working in triangles, forming a 12 pointed star composed of 12 people. We work within specific focus. The group is a reflection and form of cosmic and planetary patterns. The group's work meditation practice is the manifestation in form of a vortex of spiritual energies emitting from a center which is within the spiritual hierarchy. The essence of the work is 12 people working in star formation made up of four interlaced triangles set at cardinal points, north, east, south, and west. An aspect of our work is to assist in the externalization of spiritual hierarchy and work with the planet's ley lines and cities. The group is composed of people from many different backgrounds, cultures, countries, religions, and ages. The diversity allows us to experience commonality through diversity. Current day, after the hiatus of the physical 12s, with both some inner and outer encouragement, the work was reopened again online in 2018 as a gathering of members from many different countries under the guidance of Stephen Chernicky. We began with 24 individuals composing two 12s for the full moon. Many were very surprised at the almost audible click when that last triangle engaged. From that point, the group has grown Currently, there are 12 12s that meditate together. Quite often, three 12s will form to a group of, form to a grand triangle of 12s. Besides our daily triangles, we engage in several other meditations, which we will explain shortly. On the website, you'll be able to find the Temple of Light by the Initiate, plus links to several other books, the most recent being the Conclave 2025 and How to Enter. The links to our website, et cetera, will be put in the chat box. James will now tell you about the burning ground work. Uh, thank you, Mindy, and thank you, Vita, too. I'll just start my video. There we go. Is that good? Yes, that's good. Hi, um, um, I'm afraid mine may, may sound a bit like a, a, a car maintenance um, schedule rather than that interesting uh, work I've just been listening to, but nevertheless, stick with me and we'll see what we can do. Um, I stated earlier that we're trying to elucidate for you the Burning Ground 12s meditation and some of its workings. The 12s group has two Burning Ground meditations. One is a monthly meditation and that is a more traditional Zoom centered event, if traditional is Zoom uh, could be described. And that's led by a facilitator with participants um, entering a bit like this, um, adding invocations and mantrams where needed throughout the meditation. The second meditation is completed weekly and it's of a less traditional style. And therefore I've chosen to um, I'd talk about this in a little bit more detail, hopefully not too much more detail. The overall aim, utilising a, a group of 12 or more, is to create a channel, a vortex which can afford the spiritual hierarchy direct access to Earth. 
The purpose is to dispel glamour by flooding the earth with love, light and power and affecting its etheric web in order to hasten the divine evolutionary process. After a mantra of protection is said, all participants or light workers coordinate, coordinate and meditate at exactly the same time and on the same weekday every week. Participants are usually from the Northern Hemisphere as this affords a practical time of day to meditate and currently includes Guatemala, Mexico, United States of America, Canada, Iceland, Northern, Central and Southern Europe plus Africa. The meditation itself is led from a pre-made recording which is streamed or downloaded from the internet or on a printed script just in case of power or internet failure. The burning ground energy is manifested by utilizing the well-established triangular network of light by gathering together on the mental plane and as a circle of 12 soul infused light bodies. The predetermined four triangles are then creatively activated and melded together. This forms a 12 pointed star. At each point of the star is positioned a light worker, focusing upon the invoked descending vortex of hierarchical energies. This is done with dispassion and indifference, only concentrating upon the vortex and the energy conduit, leaving the destination, transmutation and manipulation of the work to the spiritual hierarchy. Each triangle forming the twelve is picked at random. All names are entered into a sacred chalice and individually chosen to participate in each twelve or in one of the other roles. There are often times when there are more than the multiple of 12 light workers are participating. This brings about the triangles of support or individual supporters. Working again on the mental plane and chosen from the sacred chalice, the supporters are grouped into threes to form triangles. During the meditation, they imagine themselves standing at a distance behind the circle of 12 formation. And when the triangles of the 12 star are activated, they too mentally link to form a triangle. They observe and the assembly of the 12 pointed star and use their will and intent to induce a safe and illuminated space around the 12 ready for the creation of the vortex and the 12 to work within. Holding steady the illuminated space throughout the meditation and visualizing and encouraging the positive energies to flow through the vortex and descend to earth. The day-to-day -day running of the meditation utilizes Facebook's Messenger there is a weekly Burning Ground 12's messenger page and this is where all pertinent information is posted. An invitation plus an event time announcer is posted on the messenger page each week and participants are requested to put a small yellow thumbs up on the actual invitation image. Each can choose to participate in real time as previously explained, or as a supporter utilizing a plus or minus 12 hour window, adding their support and energy to the endeavor only at a different time. We seek to ensure that no energy is wasted or goes unutilized. I hope that's been of some help and perhaps encourages you to start your own downpouring of light, or should you wish, Come join us, all are welcome. And now I'll hand you to Dana, who will be illuminating you with regard 
to the ashram meditation. Thank you so much, James. The Twelves Ashramic Meditation. This meditation is given in the form of a darsham, a form of blessing, if you will, with all the various forms of service that we offer and take responsibility to do, it allows us a bit of reprieve that we may step back from clearing the way for humanity and focus on restoring our own energies that we may be ready to be of better service. We enter as a group and are given the opportunity to penetrate to the center of the ashram, totally protected throughout various walls of light. The outer wall is that of goodwill, the working matter of the new group of world servers, the will to good, the will to love. What better energies to be bathed in? The next wall of light is that of brotherhood, that recognition of the oneness of all beings in all kingdoms, which will eventually succeed in clearing the way for the reappearance of the Christ. We enter through the third wall where the energy of the separated self dissolves into the essence of the overshadowing by divinity in the experience of the one life, guided by the hierarchy. We penetrate into the fourth wall, where the essence of that divine quality of second ray, love, permeates all, all of which we are a part, seeing ourselves both as being completely immersed, as well as recognizing the millions of scintillating expressions of that one great being. And we tarry here a while in this eternal bliss. Finally, we reach the fifth wall of the inner sanctum where the wisdom aspects integrates with that divine second ray love aspect and also integrates the energies of the active intelligence. In the distance, in the center of the ashram, we see that brilliant glowing light radiating the perfect compassion the world teacher as he holds steady the fringes of his garment afire with light and love the light of the world. This is a sampling of one of the meditations on the 12star.org website. You're welcome to peruse it at any time. So thank you so much. And Torben will be here now to help give additional information on the new moon and astrology and the disciples invocation. Torben, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Unmute yourself, yes. Now it's coming. Thank you. It didn't really work. Uh, it was as if uh, the technique uh, was a little trouble. Hello, everyone. Um, I am to say a little about um, how the 12th community works with one of the, you might say, waves of the monthly 
inflow of energy. But um, generally speaking, uh, the 12 in itself um, is also visu visually uh, demonstrating or showing a zodiac. So that links us very closely to the archetypal imprint of the zodiac. Um, yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> we might say that inspired by the DK and Bailey works, we are during a month having each week a kind of meditation. And those are the ones that the group are um, gradually unfolding or speaking about. We have the full moon meditation. We have the new moon meditation. We have the ashramic meditation, and we have something called the 12 gates ritual, which is the fourth kind of meditation. Um, and that it uh, together makes the, the monthly program, you might say, of the 12th group. And then we have some additional uh, small circles of various groups. The new moon service is, is one of them, and it's based on uh, a quote uh, by Master DK, which I will read for you. There are crisis points at times of superlative tension in the meditative work of all hierarchical ashrams. At the times of the new moon and of the full moon, all members of all ashrams meditate deeply in an invocative and evocative ma manner. Their meditation therefore falls into two parts. The first part is evocative of inspiration from the Nirmanakayas, with whom they deliberately get in touch. The second part is invocative of the new group of world servers and enables them responsively to become, to come under hierarchical impression. And that in fact also directly links us to this evening's arrangement and the practice of the, the 2025 initiative and um, shows the, you might say, the common occult and esoteric background for our work. And that's also one of the reasons why we are sitting here today together with all of you other groups, because we see ourselves as part of the New World World Service and seek the integration of that. And therefore, we also uh, deeply appreciate the work of preparing the New World World Service integration process towards 2025. Um, the 12th community has uh, also two, you might say, House astrologers, of which I am one of them, and we have another, and we usually up to the events uh, prepare that of describing the uh, background energies of the monthly sun in the zodiac and the rulers esoterically, hierarchically, personally for the group, in order for them better to understand in which energies we work with the 12 circles. Um, we have a specific as well, I won't go into detail with, with any of the specific astrological details of, for instance, tonight, but just mention that we are so blessed that we are in fact in the exact transmission hour right now. And that was a very lucky uh, instance for that today. Um, we have um, related to this new moon work, a specific new moon service. It more or less uh, copies the full moon 12th process, but it has a kind of occult meditative, um, you might say, uh, element of also leaving a meditative reflection point in the middle at the higher interlude. If any of you knows the meditation formats of 
for instance, that loses trust on, on other esoteric groups. So all in all, that was um, the astrology and how it supports our occult and esoteric work and that we are some doing that. We, on Messenger, Facebook Messenger, have an astrological chat room where we kind of announce that, uh, where the astrological events come and how uh, we can interpret that and understand that as a background energy for our 12th work. Besides that, uh, I would say a little about um, the unique prayers and mantras of this group community uh, or group meditation community, you might say. As the last century progressed and the teachings of Alice Bailey, uh, Master Joel Kuhl, Master Moria, Master Rakachi through Lucille Sir Cedarcrantz, Master Hilarion, for instance, uh, through the um, teachings of the temple, as well as through other channels of uh, hierarchical uh, messengers, it became obvious that the need for uh, more advanced occult uh, meditations and powerful discipleship circle meditations uh, could be released. And that was, in fact, what happened with the 12th triangle, initial triangle of, of people. And uh, the one of the mantras was the ashramic mantra re re revealed, uh, given in 1982 and received by this triangle, a member of this triangle. It was released uh, during the, the months uh, of the summer, July, August, and October, 1982, in the stanzas, uh, one by one and um, I'd, I'd like to read a message um, from the initiate behind it uh, the one we call the initiate or Master Veda he writes like this and you can read it in uh, the little booklet called it Discourses which are messages from him I read as follows my brothers the this invocation that has been vouchsafed to you as a translation of an old, is a translation of an old text, which has been used by my ashram frequently for many centuries. I ask that you memorize it and use it frequently for it is a potent tool in our work and it has certain properties. I shall hint at a few points that may aid you in recognizing its value. There are 13 lines. Each line can be placed at a point on the mandala that I have shown you. The 13th, like Christ and his 12 disciples, can be placed in the middle, as is the sun to the planets. Think carefully, think carefully upon the above, and over the coming years, you will ascertain intuitively the true meaning. Suffice it to say, and then he goes on, and you can read further on this. He explains each sentence. So this specific mantra is a deeply occult ashramic mantra, which in a way looks very much like the great invocation, third stanza from uh, 1945. Thank you. And I will now pass you on to Vita. Oh, yes. Here we got it. Uh, before Vita takes the word, I, I'd just read it for you. Try to um, sit openly and sense the power of this. May the flame of the one find the crucible of your being. May the mighty one issue forth from on high. May love eternal and love inclusive rule over all. Let the flame spin upon the way. Let the light stand revealed. Let the seeker become the rose. May the tide of illusion be turned. May the great work be completed. 
May the white ones issue their ultimatum. Let the ultimatum be heard by those who have ears to hear. Let them have insight and knowledge that they may understand. Let them choose a right and with free will. And in so choosing, let peace come to earth. Let's just say an inner silent om and send it out. And since our integration, the many groups, the around 50 groups, into one essential group service instrument, the Nuclear World Service. Thank you. I'll pass you on to Vita. I will briefly introduce the weekly 12s. It's a weekly meditation, and it was felt that a more constant rhythm was needed uh, or would be useful. And we have over 60 people meditating each week. We also have a 12-hour window because people live all over the world, so it's easier. Um, what is important is that it's every Tuesday, but many of the Tuesdays, obviously, there might be a new moon, there might be a full moon, there might be an equinox, or there might be a solstice. So then we incorporate information into uh, the 12 that people then can use um, as they choose uh, and incorporate that into their 12 formation. Uh, it's, it's a powerful one. It's a constant one. And for years we had the same, mainly the same people uh, joining and doing it. So it's it's a very strong group as such. Uh, the other thing I wanted to introduce was the healing circle. That's not in a 12 formation. Um, it is in a circle, if we want to say so. And the people are placed, let's say, in our center. Uh, there's quite a lot of people. And because it's not in a 12 formation, people from outside can join as healers. And people from outside also can join uh, if they need healing. We have over 150 people uh, who have requested healing and it's on a daily basis. People link up daily. So these are additional ones, additional uh, activities. What is important to say is that these are not, these are voluntary activities. People join if they want to, but they're not obligatory. We have some uh, activities which are obligatory, which keep the rhythm and keep the twelves on a monthly basis is like injecting the different energies and uh, irradiating them out. These are uh, groups that are more uh, on a voluntary basis. And it's quite amazing actually how many of these there are and how constant the people are. So yes, that's uh, what I wanted to say and wanted to share. Thank you. Sorry, um, Dana, it's up to you. And thank you again, Torben, for your uh, very interesting and uh, very varied contribution. Dana, over to you. Sorry. No, thank you, Vida. Thank you so much. Um, and anytime during what I am presenting here, Alexander, you're more than welcome to just flash through some of the images that you so graciously made more effective for me. Okay. This presentation surfaces around the 12 gate ritual. This ritual was inspired by the upcoming 2025 conclave that takes pl place next Wiesach. The world onto Karana is the constant continuum connecting humanity to the depths of our spiritual hierarchy and beyond to Shambhala. The relationship of incarnate disciplines, disciples with the new group of world servers is to be the intercession between humanity and hierarchy. The hierarchy supervises the inflow from Shambhala the great triangle of Moria, 
Katumi, and Rakatsi and their nine senior initiates encompass the focus for this 100-year conclave in 2025. The world on Quran is principally one of descent. However, it also acts as a pathway to Shambhala, beer hierarchy. Within the hierarchy, a group of senior initiates are focused on our earth scheme and particularly on the externalization. They are known as the Brotherhood of the Star and by other names. The new group of world servers reflects this affiliated ashram that is made up of different masters from various rays. They are the vanguard of the world teacher and they are part of this process. To approach the world Antakarana is more efficiently undertaken in group formation through triangles to twelves to multiple twelves, the apex being the one of the 144. The secret power of this configuration is displayed throughout history and indeed in the universe around us. We come into incarnation not only choosing what karma we can most efficiently resolve, but also seeing the greater vision and progress along the path to address what we believe to be the opportunity for our greatest service and partially who our co-workers will be. Those grow as we recognize the 12 groupings that we are chosen to come into incarnation to serve with. Little did we remember that we are born into a mystery school that surrounds us, defines us, and in the lower levels of teleship, controls much of what we do think and feel. The stage in this continuation of the enfoldment of the purpose and the plan the time has come when we need to prepare for the outer expression of the 144. Our ashram has asked that we approach them as best we can through the fires and the burning ground, bathe in the second ray and into our sacred ashram with the hierarchy to receive the blessings from the chalice of Shambhala. To what purpose? As we know, Shambhala expresses its energy through hierarchy and hierarchy through the new group of world servers to humanity. What we do is act as a beacon within the new group of world servers to focus the ashramic efforts further. We shall journey through the fires, burning the dross, immersed in the second ray, and approach and break through to the point of light and arrive within the ashram beyond. This meeting point is where the work shall truly emerge, for we are the point of least resistance. The, the planned outcome is threefold. Prepare through training and ridding ourselves of dross, assist in a clearing the Antakarana of dross and enabling the inflow of light, love, and power to the new group of world servers and beyond. Our methodology is through a live vir virtual ritual via Zoom. Those who are unable to participate in the live ritual may participate via posted recordings up to 48 hours afterwards. The recording should be followed as there will be variations that vary each month. The key here is real-time participation, preferably as you can live, but at minimal at least within 48 hours via the recording. These meetings are held the first Monday of every month. We are expecting some initiatory process to unfold as our group to prepare us for 2025. So prepare. 
for a state of bliss, that you may be broken open so the light of illuminated ecstasy can be shared to all. And now, Torben will continue and help us with giving thanks. Thank you, Dana, beautifully. Um, I suggest that you take a meditative attitude and sense your alignment. Feel your alignment with your soul and spirit, nature, and with hierarchy. And sense your coherence with all groups and members that are here today and all groups and members worldwide. As closure of the formal 12th presentation performed by the 12th Global Network Coordination Subgroup for the 12th Global Community, and as an integral part of the New Global World Service, we extend our deep gratitude to all participants here today and worldwide. We also extend our thanks to the entire hierarchy led by the Christ and his departmental companions, Moria and Master R. We send likewise our loving, humble thoughts of gratitude to the Shambhala representatives, the three supernal, the radiant seven, the ones constituting the 49 planetary planes of existence, the three Buddhas of activity, the three eternal spirits, the avatar synthesis, the spirit of peace, and Buddha Sakyamuni. And coordinating the, those beings, our Lord of the world, Sana Kumara. We include the extraplanetary forces, the solar initiates, our seven holy planetary logos, our solar logos and his superiors of the cosmic triangle of Sirius, Pleiades, and the great bear. And we might open our consciousness and connect to our galactic logos, the intergalactic consciousness of the Milky Way and Andromeda logoic energies the local cluster of the 13 closest galaxies, the zodiac of galaxies, the Virgo supercluster, the Laniakia deep space supercluster, and the universal multiversal deep space beingness of absolute eternal and infinite beingness or of essential universal divinity. Sends your and our integral group connectedness with this divine synthetic life essence. Let it vitalize yours, your groups, humanity, and Earth's entire beingness as you feel gratitude in your heart and renew your firm dedication to the one life, the one self. Just follow mindfully the recitation of the mantra of the New Global World Service. May the power of the one life who are through the group of all true servants. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May we fulfill our part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech. 
and unitedly we just silently say an om in gratitude and blessing to the world. Let it circulate, the spiritual grid developing these years all over the planet. Thank you, dear friends. I'm giving the word to Mindy. Thank you, Torben. That was very beautiful. Uh, we're going to close with the question that we had posed to the group. How can each of us and all of us together address the urgent needs of humanity in relation to the development of the individual and globus, global Christ consciousness process? One possible thought is the hierarchy works through humanity, through the soul-infused personality and the receptive mind. So each of us and all of us together are the hands and voices that convey and bring about the Christ consciousness in the awareness through our words and actions. And we need to keep in mind that speech is one of the most occult tools at our disposal and use it wisely. Torben, your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. My thoughts are that primarily the development of the combination of expansion of love through a greater understanding must be the foundation for the reappearance of the Christ. That means that each individual, each group, and each nation must evolve deeper and broader understanding and thus cultivate tolerance, compassion, and eagerness to serve and, you might say, engage in the problems of humanity. Thank you. And Vita? Unmute, Vita. Yes, I come. As Vita said, has a personal Christ atom which is kept in the heart and it resonates to the vibration of the Christ energy now penetrating the earth the growth which covers this atom needs to be transmuted by the individual through light and by love into light and love. The Christ consciousness is a group consciousness. So it affects the individual, but it transcends the individual, inclusive of transcending humanity to embrace all creation and innumerable dimensions. So again, it's a transmuted power in which we have to submit ourselves through our own light and let it shine forth and do the transmutation work. So it's also an affirmation of our divinity. Thank you. Dana, to you. An additional input here. <laughs> Sorry, oh, you, I hear him in the background. Um, <laughs> actually, one of the one of the best things that we can do is exactly what we're doing right now you know one of the things is bringing attention to this great need and bringing all the esoteric groups together you know so we can work as one heart and one mind to help ground the energies for the idealization of the, the reappearance of the christ as he approaches closer and closer as the need and the outcry 
goes out more strongly every day. So daily invocations, daily connections, the quality of divine love, divine essence, divine heart, divine will to spiritually demand the assistance from hierarchy and have them draw, draw closer. And thank you so much, Alexander, for um, being such a conduit for allowing this to happen. So Mindy, or after Jim actually will continue with his thoughts. Hi again. Um, God, they were all brilliant answers. And uh, I, I can see why we're all in the same group now. It's just superb. So thank you, Donna. Thank you, everyone. Um, people say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. John Lennon was as correct in 1971 as it is today. We are not alone in dreaming for a better world, but we need to let as many of the people know that it's okay to dream. We all need to ensure that every contact that we make is a positive encounter. And by being our best selves, we serve as a beacon to others. Whether our circle of influence be great or small, we all need to radiate our influence and build the foundations for the future. Don't think of 2025 as the end, but rather think of 2025 as the beginning. <laughs> now I'll pass you on to Shandy. Well, I say pass you on to Shandy. I'll do a rather cunning turn the laptop. And there she is. Thank you, Jim. That was lovely. I think we must work with love and understanding to unify and harmonise all that is broken within us and in humanity. And at the same time, we must remain aware of the fake forces that seek to separately separate and divide us from each other. It is not about us. It's about others. And that kind of concludes the answers. So now it's over to you, the audience. We invite now uh, participants uh, to share your thoughts um, and maybe questions uh, to the 12th representative. So if you would like to speak, please unmute yourself and maybe activate your video. How can each of us and all of us together address the urgent needs of humanity in relation to the development of the individual and global Christ consciousness process? Alexander, could I begin by just, this is Claire in New Zealand, just wanting to thank you all for a very beautiful expression and role model of group cohesion. Um, your work is clearly blessed and I thank you for blessing us with um, the sharing from this morning. Hello. Hello, Alexander. 
Can you yes. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We don't see you, but we can hear you. I um oh okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Nancy from the US. And just to um throw my two cents into the conversation about what we can do. I think one of the most important things we can do is to try to educate humanity that we do have a higher self. We are not just our outer vehicles and personalities, but we do have the entity that we all know as the soul. And it's the soul that connects us to each other and to all of life. And I think part of the um, part of the work that some of us have to do right now is just to make that known that we are not that that human nature is not unchangeable as has been believed all along, but it can be changed. And we're now moving into the phase where that change is essential, and we're moving into our higher selves, the soul, which which is the Christ consciousness. So. It all fits together if we can think of it as a as a unity of what humanity needs to know right now. We have a higher self. That self is part of the Christ consciousness. And the events of the world are now making it imperative that we make the shift in consciousness to, to the true self, to who we really are. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for a beautiful program. I'm very glad to have been here and to have gotten to know you and to experience this cycle of programs that Alexander is and his group are putting together so that we can all meet one another and be together as one, one group, the new group. Thank you all. Thank you, friends. If there are anyone else would like to share, please do it now. As time of our program run comes to the end. I just want to take this opportunity, Alexander, to thank you for supporting us so well, for aiding us, for all the images, for everything. You've been gracious, efficient, a light. Thank you so much. Amen to that. <laughs> yes, we, we can only reciprocate and say that you've been, been superb. Um, I can't believe we've been that, that comprehensive that we didn't get that many questions. <laughs> <laughs> but we've probably done um, the best we could for t for today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been great fun. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Each of our groups has a role to play, and uh, I'm just thanks to the to our group, the coordination group, 2025 initiative. And so, what we mm -hmm. do, we all together as each of our groups. We know that uh, experience of being together and work as one and uh, sometimes coming under the same name so it's uh often people associate it with my name the group who's doing this and gratitude to the 12s and to all those people who are behind you who are not here today uh with us on the call we recognize that you are just uh several faces, several beautiful souls representing a much wider community of groups of clouds. Yeah.
Yes, and thank you again so much for your help, Alexander. And and like you say too, in the more esoteric groups that we can all be a part of and connected to, just creates a stronger invocation, you know. So this is wonderful. Thank you again so much. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the purpose of this program is that we uh, learn about each other's work, recognizing each other's notes, and that as we stand together, uh, linking subjectively, we could inwardly identify the presence of each other, being in different countries, different continents, holding and focusing the note that each of our groups manifests. Mm -hmm manifesting the, the the qualities that ashrams are projecting through us. And so we closing now our circle this time, and I invite Daniela to lead us through a closing ritual to radiate the fruits of our work today. Thank you, and thank you, everyone. So we are <clears throat> finishing our meetings, our monthly meeting, our monthly gatherings with a small gesture ritual together by pronouncing the last um, sentence of the great invocation. So I'll show it once and then we can do it together. So let light and love and power mm -hmm. restore the plan on earth. And then here, with, with our uh, hands, both of our hands, we form Dharma Chakra Mudra. And that's where we pronounce our first Om by lowering our hands, the second Om, and the third Om while opening our palms in a gesture of generosity and blessing. So let's do it together. Let light, light. and love. No and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. 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 Thank you, friends. Until we meet again. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you. Thank you all so much. A big respect. The last one was very fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.